Hi, and welcome back to Deborah's Glad Tidings. Don't forget to punch that thumbs up button on your way into story time. I'm gonna go ahead and start our story for today. I just wanted to give you a different ambiance for story time. Once there was a prince named Mark Williams who wanted to marry, but his concern was finding a real princess. He traveled all over the land in search of finding such a lady. But there was always something wrong with the ladies. Some of them were as annoying as Dee Dee. He was depending on one lifestyle and that's the kingdom marriage. He was that guy. He found women in large numbers, but there was always concern as to whether they were real princesses. It was impossible for him to decide because it was one thing after another that seemed to him not quite right about the ladies. This process was no minute tour. He eventually returned to his palace quite depressed because he desired so much to have a real princess for a bride. All he wanted was peace, love, and hope. One day, a very violent, windy storm came through. There was thunder, lightning, heavy rain, and it was pitch black outside. Suddenly, there was a loud knocking at the door. King Plob, Mark Williams' father, went himself to answer the door. There was a woman standing outside claiming to be Princess Potella, who was really a con artist. She had heard about Mark Williams' quest to find a princess to marry and his mother's little test to determine whether the ladies were true princesses. She was a sophisticated lady, but the rain and wind had beat her down until she looked like a peasant servant woman. Water trickled down her face and her clothes clung to her body as she stood there soaked yet super smiley. She insisted that she was a real princess, but Mark Williams' father, King Plov, was skeptical and reluctant to let her enter into the palace. Ah, let her enter. We shall soon see if Princess Patella is really who she said she is, said Mark Williams' mother. Queen E. Johnson Wootson. She never said a word to the prince or his father, King Plov, about what she was going to do, but rather went quietly into the bedroom and took all the linen off the bed. And she put three little peas on top of a bedspread. Then she piled 20 mattresses on top of the peas, one after another. And then she put 20 feathered beds over the mattresses. It was minecrafted and a slick production. Upon this bed, Princess Patella was to sleep that night in discomfort. What Queen E. Johnson Wooson didn't know was that Princess Patello was hip to her plan. The next morning, Queen E. Johnson Wooson asked her how she had slept. Oh, very badly indeed, replied Princess Patello. I barely closed my eyes the entire night. 
I don't know what was in my bed, but there was something hard underneath me. And I am certain I will be black and blue all over. It hurt me so much. Now it was plain to Queen E. Johnson Woosen that the lady who showed up at the palace must be a real princess since she had been able to feel the three little peas through the 20 mattresses and 20 feathered beds. Only a real princess could have had such a delicate sense of feeling, she thought. Convinced that he had found a real princess, Mark Williams made Princess Patella his wife. He told Princess Patella it will be us two always, and he wanted the fruitful wife so they could have lots of children. They planned to live it up. These were magic moments. They had money, music, and Dave's poems and songs at the wedding. From then on, Princess Potella lived Be Love's life, filled with health, wealth, and real talk. The three peas were placed on display in the cabinet of curiosities where they are still to be seen, provided they are not lost. Princess Patella was simply a sweetheart and a lady of real delicacy, but she was a wolf in sheep's clothing. For her, it didn't matter much because she finally got the Mrs. after her name. When I thought about the character Princess Patella, who was a con artist, I thought about Simon the Sorcerer in the Bible. Just like Princess Patella deceived Mark Williams, his father, King Plob, and the mother, E. Johnson Wootson, Simon Peter went around through the city deceiving people. And you'll find it in Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 13. It reads, Now for some time a man named Simon Peter had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great and all the people both high and low gave him their attention and explained this man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were all baptized, both men and women. Simon himself also believed and was baptized. And then he followed Philip everywhere he went astonished by the great signs and miracles that he saw. So here you have two characters, both operating in the spirit of deception. And another scripture that came to my mind, and, and I like uh, what Edward Smart said one time as a response to a story time that I did. He says, we need to have better discernment. And I really agree with that. And, and now that we're living in perilous times, I do believe we need to pray and ask God for more discernment. Because uh, according to Matthew 7, chapter 7, 15 through 16, it says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ferocious 
wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, neither can a bad tree bear good fruit. So we need to pray for more discernment so that we can recognize those wolves in sheep's clothing, like our character, Princess Patella. And Queen E. Johnson Wilson thought she had everything under control to make sure she warded off the counterfeits but she actually still got outsmarted by a wolf in sheep's clothing. I want to thank you again for coming by to join me for story time. Always remember, until we meet again, may his peace be with you. And always remember, I have a will to live.